honestly, we made the right decision putting Fit in the middle, because this guy <laughs> is just a Minecraft base building god. So in order to test my Minecraft skills, Mr. Beast put me into an unwinnable situation to see if I could survive. Me and six other YouTubers were each assigned a different biome. Each of us would take command of a hundred players and would have 24 hours to build a civilization before eventually having to fight the others to be the last nation standing. Sounds simple, right? But here's the catch. As the 2B2T survivalist, I was given the most difficult starting conditions. The ocean. The biome in the center of the map with only a small island. The reason I got trolled like this is because a while back Mr. Beast came to the place that I call home, the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, and he attempted to survive there. This of course caused the community to riot and things got ugly pretty quickly. Eventually, Beast and his team informed me that they were not making a video on the server, but they wanted to stay in contact for future projects. Well, fast forward over a year and here we are. I was at an immediate disadvantage. Thanks a lot, Beast. Each of the seven teams would have a giant slime in the center of their biomes that they would have to protect. When the slime is defeated, that civilization loses. It was clear that I was brought in to be the first to lose, but I was not going to let that happen. We were going to fight and utilize every possible advantage we could. This 24-hour period was intense, so you better be hitting that subscribe button. I put myself through the gauntlet for your entertainment. Now, the goal was simple. Survive as long as we could, despite our almost impossible odds. With only 24 hours to prepare, teamwork would be crucial. And these seven YouTubers are each going to take charge of a team. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Born ready. Let's do it. Server, start the challenge. When we spawned in, we all started on the same island. I managed to get everyone wrangled into a Discord VC, and my background as a school teacher actually came into play by trying to get these children to cooperate. After getting starting materials distributed, I told everyone what the plan was. By being in the center of the map and vulnerable from all sides, the only path to survival was a strong defense. We would build a large fortress surrounding our slime and use the ocean as a natural barrier that would make sneaking up on us much harder. The majority of our army would be on defense, but we would have a small strike team on offense that would attempt to destroy the weaker enemy slimes. With the odds against us, this was the only path to survival. I manually assigned each person one of two roles, miner and builder. Miners would gather the materials and builders would use them. Our initial wall would be built with deep slate, until we could get our hands on stronger materials like obsidian. One of our players managed to steal sugarcane from the very edge of the desert biome, and this would be absolutely crucial for obtaining bookcases to enchant. As our island fortress expanded, so did our resources. We began farming trees, crops, and we even managed to steal some livestock from a bordering biome. Unlike the other nations, which had resources such as villages and massive forests, we would need fishing to obtain most of our experience and materials. Since our methods of grinding XP were extremely limited, we had to choose our gear carefully. Everyone in the ocean was forced to wear glass on their heads, so crafting helmets would be a waste of resources. We also made sure to only focus on melee weapons because of how Mr. Beast events actually work. You see, in order to get 1,000 players on the same map without lagging, each biome is actually its own separate Minecraft server. So if a player crosses into our territory, we won't actually be fighting them, but rather a projection of them. Because of this limitation, entities such as arrows and enderpearls wouldn't work. So we had to keep this in mind when we were grinding out gear. For the first few hours, I mainly kept tabs on our nation's progress, contributed to gathering resources, and even brainstormed wall designs with our engineers. We ended up choosing a standard factions wall that would use water source blocks and obsidian rings to make digging through the walls more challenging. The nether dimension was disabled entirely, so any and all obsidian would be put towards the walls. Despite our best efforts to obtain more livestock, 
we could not find any cows on the borders. Fishing was getting us leather, but we needed bookshelves sooner rather than later, so we made an alliance with the Plains Biome. In exchange for additional books, we gave them a surplus of iron. We also agreed to a pact of non-aggression. If you guys don't come after us, we will not come after you. Yeah, we will definitely not come after you guys. In our in our opinion right now, we think jungle is probably the biggest threat. So we're going to make sure that that border is defended. Definitely don't want to have to worry about the ocean region too. So a non-aggression pact would be mutually beneficial. Yeah, I think so too. Well, yeah, that, that sounds good to me then. You have my word that we're not going to attack you then. Now, instead of having to worry about six different borders, we would only have to worry about five. It was a calculated risk, but with other nations making alliances, we had no choice. We continued mining and fishing throughout the night. It was actually good for morale. The fact that we were all put into these intense conditions together helped us form a bond. We were going to defend this ocean fortress with our Minecraft lives. Our biome was seen as a joke, but in the end, we would be the ones laughing. After spending the final hours preparing for the inevitable invasion, I rallied everyone together and did my best to give them a motivational speech. First off, I want to say thank you so much to everyone for being here today. The ocean was, we were written off as a joke. We are there to be sort of the brunt of the entire video. We were put at a major disadvantage, but just through unity, look how geared up we are. Look how strong we are. If you're on the battlements, it's important to be equally spread around the entire fortress. So as long as we have a strong defense, we can win. We are going to absolutely dominate. Even though we were at a disadvantage, we're going to cream them. We're going to just clobber them. We're going to crush them. When it was over, Mr. Beast decided to pay us a visit and ask us about our plan. Your base is looking insane. How are things going? Oh, doing well. We've been doing a lot of building. We've been making sure that the defenses are impenetrable for the most part. And overall, we're just making sure we've got team unity. Can you kind of run me through the thought process of the base? So if I if I zoom out, it looks like you got a, a little wall, which is going to be pretty effective if they try to swim over because it's going to be a hassle to get up. Then you have a bigger wall with buttons. What's the logic behind the buttons? Uh, so the idea is that the buttons are there to make it harder for them to place water buckets if they're falling against it. It also makes it harder to place blocks to staircase up. In between the layers of this wall, there's actually some water as well. So it's a lot harder for them to just mine straight through to the slime. Interesting. And every other layer is obsidian to be effective because you didn't need to make each layer of obsidian, just every other. That's right. Bro. Just just enough to be annoying to the enemy teams. We, honestly, we made the right decision putting fit in the middle because this guy <laughs> is just a Minecraft base building god. Oh, I couldn't have done it without uh, the help of my team. That's for sure. What the heck? Dude, you are crazy. You took this way more <laughs> serious than the other teams. I, I wasn't sure, so I always err on the side of caution. The entire team was energized, but then Mr. Beast dropped a bombshell on us. Okay, well, just so you know, you're the only one that respawns if you die. If your teammates over here die, they're goners. Wait, wait, wait. What? Wait. Instead of respawning, permadeath was enabled, which completely changed our game plan. We now had to fight even harder to protect each other and our slime. We destroyed the outer areas of the base, leaving only the fortress and the battlements. Once Beast gave the signal, it was time. This is on the way. Let's go. Is is it just uh, Got him. Good, good job, team. Oh yeah, they're bridging over. I see. It's all right. They're not gonna jump into all of us at once. They're gonna take full damage. They're gonna. Yeah, say that. <laughs> say that. Say that. Their best players yeah. are here. They're vulnerable. You can force them to go back. It worked, they're leaving! <laughs> they came in thinking they'd have an easy kill on us, but they realized we were arms of the teeth. Everyone's doing a great job, keep it up. While teams had tried attacking us, they began backing off after seeing our sheer numbers and powerful defense. This would buy us valuable time, as other biomes began to be attacked as well. They're mining down, they're mining down! Yep. Alright, yeah, yeah, they're breached, they're breached. At this point, two of the enemy teams had been eliminated. We had accomplished one of our goals, which was to survive longer than other biomes despite our major disadvantage. But any survivors of those teams would now join forces, so we had to make sure we didn't get overrun. 
Purple's right outside. Ice is right outside the entrance. Russian, show us what you're made of. He's all down. Back it up, back it up. You know what to do? Yup. Get ready for a fight. Oh, let's do it. This is a bad angle. That's what feather falling's for. Alright, get ready. I'm on Poland. I'm on Poland. Killed Poland. Good stuff. Oh yeah, there's a lot of activity back here. Yep, good job. Keep it up. Up one more. Oh, wait, hold on. They're, they're stuck. All right, there's two of them stuck in here. I got this. Just you wait. That's right. Burn, baby. Burn. Disco Inferno. The base defense was working brilliantly. Even with constant attacks, we were fending them off. We had survived almost 90 minutes at this point, and three opposing biomes had already fallen. With our slime at critical health, though, we formed a human shield around it. But eventually, we couldn't protect it any longer, and it suffered its fatal blow. In the aftermath, our ocean fortress was littered with the wreckage of a battle hard fought. Despite being at a major disadvantage, we survived longer than three of the other biomes. Mr. Beast had given me this test of survival, and considering we did much better than he expected, I'd say we passed. It was only possible through teamwork, strategy, and having a solid plan. This event was a ton of fun, so thanks to Mr. Beast, thanks to all my teammates, and thanks to all of you for hitting that like and subscribe button. Take it easy, Fit Fam, and do your best to survive.